The Chinese space program recently completed a major milestone with their Tiangong space station. The third and final Mengtian research module was successfully docked to the station, bringing it up to full operation. Following the Tiangong's completion, the Chinese Shenzhou 15 spacecraft arrived to complete the first in-orbit crew handover with a total of six Taikonauts living and working on the station for the first time. By this point, we're all pretty familiar with seeing people on the International Space Station, so we have a pretty good idea about living in space. But life for Chinese crews on the Tiangong is like nothing else we've seen before in human spaceflight. So let's take a look at what they've been working on up there in space. This is the Space Race. The Tiangong now consists of three modules, forming a T-shaped space station that orbits around 400 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The Tianhe is the core command module, first launched in April 2021. The Wen Tian experiment module serves as a combination of crew quarters, research lab, and airlock, which was added in July 2022. And the Meng Tian module is a twin to the Wen Tian and functions purely as a research and experiment space. The first thing that you'll notice about the interior of the Tiangong is that it looks spacious and wide open, especially when compared to the ISS. Tiangong has a very minimalist, modern design. What's interesting is that the outside diameter of the Tiangong modules are nearly the exact same as the diameter of the ISS modules, about 4.2 meters or 14 feet across. So the difference is in the volume of internal space available. There are a few reasons for that. For one, the ISS modules are typically much shorter with more connection points in between that create bottlenecks in the structure. For example, the Destiny Lab on the ISS, which is the primary operating facility for US astronauts, is 8.4 meters or 28 feet long, while the Wentian and the Mengtian modules are both 18 meters or 59 feet in length. And secondly, the technology on Tiangong is just much more modern and therefore smaller and able to fit into smaller spaces. For example, many of the systems on Tiangong will connect wirelessly instead of having to run a labyrinth of cables around like what we see on the ISS. Also, much of the technology on the Tiangong is hidden behind these plain white panels when not in use. I don't know if that's more functional or aesthetic, or if they just don't want anyone else to be able to see what they're working on, but it does help make the station look very clean and modern. Spacewalks have become an exciting feature of life on the Tiangong. There are three of China's own EVA suits on the station, kept in the Wentian airlock. Spacewalks are helped out by a combination of two robotic arms on the station. The Tianhe module has a 10 meter arm and Wen Tian has its own 5 meter arm. And what's really cool is that the two can combine together and function as one single arm. This comes pretty close to matching the capabilities of the 17 meter long Canada Arm 2 on the ISS. And in a lot of ways, the dual arm system of the Tiangong is much more useful. The 15 meter arm was used in a recent spacewalk in mid-November, where the crew installed a series of intermodule connection devices, basically a series of handrails, that will allow them to easily traverse around the exterior of all three modules. As far as the crew's experience inside the Tiangong, one of the few things that really stands out is all of the footholds that are mounted onto the floor. I don't know if that's a weird thing to pick up on, but we're always used to seeing crews on the ISS just floating around all the time. But the Chinese really seem to prefer to keep their feet on the floor, so they are usually strapped in and not just free floating. Whenever you see them posing for group photos, they are always standing up straight. The crew also sleeps straight up and down in a bag in one of six bunk areas. They're like a little alcove with a curtain that gives each person their own living quarters. There are three quarters in the core module and three more in the Wen Tian module. The standard crew count for the station will be three people, but that does expand to six for a few days during crew handover periods. Life has so far looked pretty comfortable for Tiangong crews. 
They are growing fresh lettuce and vegetables on board, and they get supplies of fresh fruit like apples. Tiangong even has the first space microwave. Gallon's aerospace microwave oven was developed in China over a period of 10 years. It doesn't sound like much, but it is a pretty big deal to have a microwave that's usable in space. The ISS has never had one because the power draw would be too high. They use a food warming machine that adds hot water to their freeze-dried food packets, but it takes like 20 to 30 minutes to heat up. The space microwave on Tiangong can heat up a meal for three crew members in just seven minutes. It had to be specifically designed not just to run on very low power, but also to survive the stress of a launch on the Long March 5B rocket. Working out is also really key to health while living in space. Crew members on the ISS have to exercise for at least two hours every day. It's important to maintain as much muscle and bone density as possible, and regular exercise also helps to prevent fluids from building up in the person's head. The Tiangong has a special treadmill and cycling station for cardio, pretty similar to what we've seen before on the ISS. The newer Chinese equipment is just much smaller and more integrated into the design. And for resistance training, the new Mengtian research module came equipped with a rowing machine. This is a bit different from the resistance machine they use on the ISS. That one allows the crew to perform movements that are really similar to squats and deadlifts with up to 600 pounds of resistance. I can't imagine any astronaut has ever pulled 600 pounds in space before, so the rowing machine is probably a smaller and more efficient way to get very similar muscle activation. Obviously, the main reason that the crew is up there is to do work. Conducting research and experiments that will help to further our understanding of life and the universe. With the addition of Meng Tian, the Tiangong now has a total of 23 experiment racks on board, with an additional 50 platforms for exposed experiments on the outside of the station. These experimental racks are going to allow them to conduct experiments on ecology and biology in space, fluid physics, combustion, material science, and the effects of varying gravity. For the external experiments, the Meng Tian actually has a specific airlock system that allows the crew to prep and experiment from the inside, and then load it into the airlock where an automated system will depressurize and send it out to the exterior where either a robotic arm or a crew member on a spacewalk can collect the experiment and attach it to the surface of the station. And then they can send experiments back inside the Meng Tian through the same system. We know that the next addition to the Tiangong station is going to be the Xu Qian module, which will be a robotic space telescope that can operate either while docked to the station or independently in orbit near the station. The telescope is still under development, but it is planned to have a 2 meter diameter primary mirror with a field of view around 300 times wider than the Hubble Space Telescope and use a 2.5 gigapixel camera. That's the equivalent of 2,500 megapixels, and it will allow the telescope to image about 40% of visible space over 10 years. Beyond that, we already have word that China is considering another expansion to the Tiangong. Commander of the space station system at the China Academy of Space Technology, Wang Xiang, said recently that following the current design, China can still add an extension module to dock with the forward section of the space station, and the extension module can carry a new hub for docking with the subsequent space vehicles. We know that China is still sitting on a backup version of the Tianhe core module. They made two just in case something went wrong with the first launch, so that could be added on to the existing structure to create more of a cross-shaped station. The extra space would definitely be helpful in opening up possibilities for more international cooperation. As it stands, there will be nine international research projects arriving at Tiangong next year in 2023. Those are in collaboration with the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs and the European Space Agency. So that's a great start, but with the relatively small size right now of the Tiangong, we're not likely to see very many international crew members up there for a visit. An expansion in the future could change that. Though we definitely won't be seeing any Americans involved with the Tiangong, the same Wolf Amendment that prevents the Chinese from ever visiting the International Space Station 
works both ways and would prohibit American astronauts from having anything to do with the Chinese station. So that's what life is like up there in the Tiangong. It's definitely a bit of a struggle to piece together because we don't get very much coverage of it from the Western media, and obviously, I don't speak Chinese, as you can tell from the pronunciation, so it can be tricky to decipher the information that is available out there. So, hopefully you learned something today, and if we missed anything, let us know down below in the comments. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.